Welcome to this enlightening video, where Paul Mersky demonstrates how to measure light polarization using polarizing filters and calculate the Stokes parameters. A basic understanding of polarization is recommended. You'll gain a clear explanation of how light polarization is measured and represented on the Poincaré sphere. If you're interested in light, physics, or polarization, or simply enjoy learning, this video will be both educational and enriching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to acephysics.org with Dr. Jacob Hoodies for more expert scientific content. I'm Paul Mersky. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about polarized light uh, and how you can measure polarized light and also how to display polarized light using the Stokes parameters and the Poincaré sphere. The source uh, begins with a laser and then it passes through some filters to make it dimmer and then it passes through a beam expander to make it uh, larger in diameter. And finally, it passes through some polarizing filters that let us set the initial angle of the polarization and also let us set its ellipticity. And that's accomplished by turning this knob to set the angle of the polarization and by turning this knob to set the ellipticity. That optical element there prepares the system in a specific polarization state. That's right, and the light that passes through this comes out at an intensity that we want and with a diameter that we like and with whatever polarization we choose to set. And so this together begins the experiment with a source of polarized light in whatever configuration we desire. So when the light leaves this element. It is all in one specific polarization state. That's right. It's okay. in whichever polarization state we set. And so by turning this, we can rotate the angle of polarization to uh, a different angle. And that card represents the light and specifically the polarization of the light. That's right. That would Which be the electric field. At? What would horizontally polarized light look like? We can like? represent it like this. That'd be, and, and vertically polarized light? It would be like this. And so you can set the light to all be vertically polarized with that That's correct. Optic. That's correct. So after our light passes out of the light source and is prepared in the state that we want, we can use it to illuminate a target or a sample of some kind. The target has the ability to change the polarization. That's right. But this target that you have on right now is not gonna change it. That's right. Any practical application of this would be looking at things that do change the light for the purpose of seeing how the target changes polarized light. That's the useful application of this. But we're right now discussing the theory of it more than the useful application of it. So the light that's transmitted passes through a lens and it forms an image over on a camera here Okay, this camera is an image sensor of the type that's found on that camera I'm looking at as well Terrific. as on the iPhone or whatever. But before the light reaches the camera, it passes through one of these six different polarizing filters. Each of these contains a different polarizing filter. AcePhysics.org. Math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. So next we're gonna be talking about the Stokes parameters, which are the parameters that describe and define polarized light. What's great about them is that they are connected to the measurement of the polarization itself. I of zero degrees, you should read that as the intensity measured through a polarizing filter at zero degree. There's light going into a filter mm -hmm. and all of the light is absorbed except for the light which is polarized at a zero degree angle. That's correct. So okay. it's a filter that takes out everything except for the horizontally polarized component. Then you take also a measurement the intensity with a polarizing filter at 90 degrees. And you also take a measurement of the intensity with a polarizing filter at 45 degrees and at 135 degrees, which are diagonal and anti-diagonal respectively. And in fact, they're they're in the picture over here. That's right. right. The, the picture on the right is actually an easier way to, um, to understand this. So Q is the difference between light that is viewed through a horizontal filter minus light through a vertical filter. And U is the anti-diagonal minus the diagonal. And V is the intensity viewed through a right circular polarizing filter minus viewed through a left circular polarizing filter. So these I terms here, these six I terms are six intensity measurements taken through six different filter configurations. And those are the six different ports that we saw 
on the polarimeter barrel. If you're able to measure these quantities that you call I, Q, U, and V, you have completely characterized the polarization of light. And it's six actual measurements, six different measurements of intensity. It allows you to compute four parameters, I, Q, U, and V, and those determine or define the polarization. And I'm gonna do an example. This is the case where we have vertically polarized light passing out of the target, passes through the lens, and then through these six filters, one at a time, and we take six different images with that camera. So we have six different intensity measurements, because that's what an image is. It measures the intensity. Okay, so let's look at an example, vertically polarized light, and we're going to assume for the sake of simplicity that the intensity is equal to one. So the first parameter I is just the intensity. Q is viewed through a horizontal filter, minus the intensity viewed through a vertical filter. Well, through a horizontal filter, the intensity is zero because it blocks it all out. Through a vertical filter, you'll see the entire intensity. That will be one. Zero minus one is equal to minus one. Through the 45 degree and 135 degree filters, you'll get equal intensities through each of those. Math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. 0.5 minus 0.5 gives you a U value of zero, and the V works just like the U. Okay, this is the application that we use to control the polarimeter. And over on the right, you see a live image. I'm gonna move the reticle, that's our target. So you can see me moving it around a little bit. That's a live image on the camera of the reticle. I'm gonna move the filter wheel so that we are viewing it through a different filter. And depending on which filter we select, it may get brighter, or it may even get so dim that it's completely black, or we have a variety of different filters uh, that we can look at it through. The values of the Q, U, and V parameters are going to range from negative one to positive one. One way that we can visualize the numbers from negative one to positive one is by using a false color scale. In this false color scale, we have yellow standing for negative one, and blue standing for plus one, and this shade of green stands for zero. And we can only look at one Stokes parameter at a time using this method, but once we choose a Stokes parameter, we can represent its, its values in this way, and we'll see that we get some great false color images from that. So it computes the result and it gives it to us as an image. And what it's doing is uh, it's using false colors to show the polarization state. And the yellow refers to a negative one value. The whole screen is yellow and that tells us that the polarization is vertical at every point in the image where it sees yellow. So this is vertically polarized, but we're now going to rotate our polarizer to set the initial polarization as horizontal. And now we'll measure the horizontally polarized light. And after we look at the horizontally polarized light, we see that it is blue. And that represents a value of plus one in our false color scheme. One and minus one can both be represented using this false color scheme. So this is horizontally polarized light. Okay. So this is a special test target that it's designed to actually have something interesting to look at. This is a bunch of little pieces of special polarizing films that I've just taped together and overlapped together. So here's an image of the test target and you can see that under a single polarization filter, it's got a variety of different brightnesses. Now the light that's leaving the target is in a variety of different polarizations. That's right. The false color scheme that we use depends on which Stokes parameter we want to look at. So right now, the blue corresponds to horizontal polarization. But then if we look, for example, at the V parameter. So right circular is blue, left circular is yellow. That's right. And green is some combination of right and left circular. Right. But uh, when, it's in, when it's in a combination of left and right circular, that could mean that it's horizontal, it could mean that it's vertical, it could mean that it's diagonal, it could mean that it's anti-diagonal. A great way to represent the Stokes parameters in a visual format is to use the Poincaré sphere, which is really, should be called the Stokes sphere, because it uses the same four parameters that are the Stokes parameters, but 
it uses them to plot on this three-dimensional graph uh, what this polarization state of the light is. Q, U, and V are the measurements along the three axes, axis Q, axis U, and axis V, which are the three dimensions of this three-dimensional space. These three dimensions of this three-dimensional polarization space are not the X, Y, and Z of ordinary space that we live in. Horizontal and vertically polarized light are 90 degrees apart from one another in ordinary space. You know, you only need to rotate it by a quarter of a turn to get from one to the other. On this diagram, you actually need to go 180 degrees around a circle. Linearly horizontal and vertical are antipodes of this sphere. You know, they're not at 90 degrees to one. Any point on that sphere would tell you a certain polarization of light. That's right. And it can be either on the sphere or it can be inside the sphere. If it's on the surface of the sphere, that means that it is completely polarized, as opposed to being randomly polarized, which is also called unpolarized. Unpolarized light is a mixture of different types, but completely polarized light is only one polarization. And then partial polarization is a mixture of random, randomly polarized light with one particular polarization. A dot at the center would represent completely unpolarized light. Unpolarized right? light, that's it, correct. Completely unpolarized Completely light. unpolarized, and if it's someplace within the sphere, but not on the surface, then it is partially polarized light, and if it is on the surface of the sphere, then it is perf completely or purely polarized light. And that's actually what we're dealing with because lasers are always completely polarized. The intensity is the diameter of this circle, a vector that starts at the center and goes somewhere within the sphere are the Q, U, and V. And when the Q, U, and V reach the surface of the sphere, all of the intensity of the light is made up of polarized light. If you go around the equator, mm -hmm. that would all be linearly polarized light. Right? That's right, because it goes from horizontal to diagonal to vertical to anti-diagonal and then back to horizontal. You start at horizontally polarized and then you move towards diagonal. That is causing the angle of polarization to rotate more and more until you get to 45 degrees, which would be at, at the location at AU. Yeah, that's correct. Right circular polarized light, which is, is the peak of the sphere. And then as you continue down on the other side, it would become elliptical again and eventually reach, um, well, the opposite of wherever it started. From the top to the point where you say negative 45 degrees, it would be right elliptical. Yes, okay. right elliptical. And then once you hit 45 degrees... I think it might switch from right to left elliptical. Yes, it would, until it became left circular and then eventually left elliptical again and then back to plus 45 degree linear. Poincaré sphere is a way to represent the polarization state of light. That's what this sphere is all about. Yep. Each point on it is a different polarization state, and each point within it is a, well, also a polarization state, but one that's partially we're actually looking at a false color image of a little test target, and each of the different regions in this test target has a slightly different polarization, or a very different polarization. And with the imaging polarimeter, we have measured what the polarization is at each point, and we're displaying it with a false color image. So in the current setting, we're looking at the V parameter, and so the yellow tells means that it's right circular, blue is not to be seen, but that would be left circular. Uh, if we look at, at a different Stokes parameter, we see that the colors change. What Stokes parameter is this? Uh, so this is Q, and so the blue represents horizontally polarized light. Stay tuned for part three of our polarization series, where Paul Mirsky will join Dr. Jacob Hudis to explain how red, green, and blue subpixels and LCD screens work. Using insights from our polarization lesson, we'll break down how these subpixels combine to create the full range of colors by adjusting their intensity. Mm. It's interesting. Ah. 